The topic for my paper presentation is diagnostic approach to basal ganglia hyperintensities in infants. The basal ganglia receive projections from almost every region of the cerebral cortex, which enables them to integrate extrapyramidal motor activity. This process demands high ATP energy, in turn mandates rich blood supply and high concentration of trace metals. Unfortunately, these same features make basal ganglia vulnerable to systemic conditions, both in long term and short term. There is true susceptibility to damage during childhood when the metabolic need for basal ganglia is much higher. MR imaging is a useful tool in assessing the acute and chronic changes of basal ganglia in systemic diseases and neurological diseases. The aim of my strategy is to characterize the imaging findings in infants with basal ganglia abnormalities using different sequences on MRI and to correlate these findings with the clinical history, clinical examination and biochemical markers. Material and methods, a retrospective study was done on 15 children under the age of two years who presented with the various signs and symptoms and are referred for MRI. Imaging was performed on a 1.5 Tesla Siemens MRI. All conventional sequences were performed on all children. Post contrast and advanced imaging techniques were performed in selected cases based on findings on conventional imaging and clinical suspicion. The first case is, it, is comes under vascular etiology. Here we can see flare hyperintensities, which shows diffusion restriction in right lentiform, caudate nuclei, in corona radiator, and right frontoparietal cortex. Also, we can see foci of blooming, which is noted in the M2 and M3 segments of the right MCA. This is a case of acute infarct in right MCA territory, which is secondary to right MCA thrombus. The second case in vascular etiology, here we can see flare, flare heterogeneously hyperintense area, which shows peripheral diffusion restriction on DWA, with few areas showing blooming on span sequence. And mild peripheral enhancement on post contact imaging is also noted in the right thalamus. And mild perilational edema is also noted in the midbrain and right lentiform nucleus. Filling defects which are noted in the right internal cerebral vein, vein of gallon, and inferior cerebral sinus and straight sinus, which suggests the thrombos. This is a case of venous infarct with hemorrhagic transformation in the right thalamus secondary to the venous thrombosis. In case of metabolic etiology, here is a case of five months old child with hypoglycemia. Here we can see bilateral symmetrical T2 hyperintensities, bilateral caudate nuclei and putamen, which shows diffusion restriction. This is a case of hypoglycemic encephalopathy. This is another case of newborn which presents with birth asphyxia. Here we can see bilateral symmetrical flare hyperintensity showing diffusion restriction in the bilateral putamen. This is a case of hypoxic encephalopathy. This is another case of infant which shows bilaterally symmetric swelling, T2 prolongation and restricted diffusion in basal ganglia, insular cortex and cingulate gyrus. On MR spectroscopy, we can see a combination of a toxic metabolite peak of glutamate and glutamine at short T times. This is a case of hepatic encephalopathy. In case of congenital etiology, there is a case of Canavan's disease which shows subcortical deep and periventricular white matter of the bilateral cerebral hemisphere showing T2 hyperintensity and T1 hypointense, which suggests dismarination. There is symmetrical involvement of bilateral globus pallidus, subthalamic nuclei, which demonstrates the restricted diffusion with characteristic sparing of the posterior limb of the internal capsule. There is also mild T2 hyperintensity in the bilateral caudate nuclei and putamen. On MR spectroscopy, we can see an elevated NAA peak and the NA to creatine ratio is also not elevated. This is a case of Canavan's disease. The second case in congenital etiology, here we can see bilateral symmetrical T2 or flare hyperintensities, which shows diffusion restriction and decrease ADC values in caudate and lentiform nuclei. Few foci of flare hyperintensities are also noted in the periapidectal gray matter, substantia nigra, and brain stem. On MR spectroscopy, we can see lactate peak and decreased NA by choline ratio. This is a case of leak syndrome. Observations and discussion. In 15 children, acute cases of causes of basal ganglia hyperintensities like hypoxia, hypoglycemia, and encephalitis were seen in six children. Other cases include infarction in two children, infarct with hemorrhagic transformation secondary to venous sinus thrombosis in two children, leak disease, Canavan's disease, and hepatic encephalopathy in one children hypoxic ischemic encephalopathy in two children, bilaterally symmetric diffuse abnormalities involving the lentiform nucleus, caudate nucleus in their entirely typically suggest systemic or metabolic causes as per se it's a central cause, whereas 
if the lesion is asymmetric focal or discrete involving only a part of basal ganglia it indicates the involvement by infection or by a neoplastic etiology however there is often an overlap and atypical features of systemic diseases such as the unilateral involvement may sometimes cause confusion conclusion systemic and metabolic abnormalities often involve the basal ganglia on both sides and careful assessment of brain abnormalities occurring simultaneously outside these structures is important especially mr spectroscopy imaging should be included in the protocol mr imaging with t1 diffusion weighted imaging mr angiography mr spectroscopy are often helpful in narrowing down the differential diagnosis often times however the diagnosis is not straightforward and the correlation of typical imaging features with especially the clinical history the laboratory data can help make the diagnosis clear and correct these are my references thank you